Um, welcome back to Bass Lessons Melbourne. I'm um, here with David Searle from DGS Guitars, and we're going to um, talk through a few of his basses. So, what do we have here? Okay, we have a well, it's a 35 uh, inch scale bass that has, well, I've actually um, nicknamed this one or named this one Marilyn because of the obvious of this blonde connotation here and there's a lot of bling involved with this bass as well you know I made this as a, a bit of a demo bass though it is it is for sale this one but yep. uh, it's got all the bells and whistles in it it's got lots of little intricate little details of not bound things but little details to do with um, uh, veneer work and pinstriping and so forth and not lovely power shell block inlays oh, okay. and, and things like that this base itself is mainly maple, but it also has the walnut in the back end of the thing as well. So it's actually quite a... Um, it has a lot of bottom end mm -hmm. in, in the actual sound <clears throat> of this thing. Fairly... It's not a super slim um, neck. It's sort of a medium-sized sort of neck on, on the thing. Tilt back headstock on that, that type of thing. Brass nut up in here. Uh, it is... It does actually also... Just thinking about the internals of the actual neck, it is a... Um, it's a twin truss rod on this one here okay and it's also got a little bit of graphite on the inside of the the neck as well so Plus this one, that's going to be super stable and uh, super stable yeah it is it's almost overkill with that particular type of thing i use really tiny frets on this thing so these mm. are the banjo type frets that uh federa and dingle are using as okay. well now the idea behind the small frets is that you can actually set the strings down lower to the fretboard so you often, like if you play a bass like this one that has a low action and, uh, and small frets, um, you'll, you get used to the feeling of the whole thing being quite compact. Compact, mm. yeah. So it's easy to sort of scoot around and do all that sort of thing. You go back and pick up a bass <coughs> that's got big frets and it's like, wow, that, you know, those strings are a long way off the fretboard. Mm. So, and the fretboard is a, a beautiful maple, uh, figured maple. Uh, yeah fretboard on, on that thing there. So we've got highly figured uh, maple on the, the top there, a bit of a feature top. We've got Seymour Dink Duncan NYC pickups here in custom uh, covers that mimic the yeah. timbers and so forth used in the body. Nice pinstriping around there. Yeah, a little bit of pinstriping, a little bit of detail. And we've got uh, Hipshot A-style bridge. That's 18 mil spacing, I think, on that one there. And we've got Glockenklang three band. Into, uh, cool. into that one as well. So all gold hardware and, 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 and so um, about the bling on this one. Fingerboard radius? 20. So actually all of my bases are a 20 inch radius. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I haven't gone into compound radi radiuses. I can actually, or radii, I can actually do them. Okay. Uh, but, because uh, it's all done by hand, that's something that I haven't said about all these uh, instruments is that they're, apart from band saws and routers and, and, mm -hmm. and it's all hand tools. It's yeah. all about. You're still guiding it through the machine. Yeah, you're still yeah. doing all that sort of stuff. So there's no CNC production with any of these uh, bases at all. Uh, and we get to uh, really sort of, um, especially when we're dealing with clients, you get to really hone in and, and do exactly what they want. You get not so much modify, but you can make it for them. And, cool. Uh, this one's got a. a a classic, uh, like big beefy sort of sound. It's got a lot of top end sizzle mm -hmm. out of those pickups as well. They're our Nico 5 pickup, fairly high output. So, as you'll sort of hear when you yeah. Yes. Yeah. So maybe we'll just do a little bit of a tweak. So we've got a uh, treble mid bass. That's right. Yes. So let's do a little bit of a bass boost, maybe a bit of a mid boost. Yep. Yes. Um, 
some organic woody, woody mm. sound to it up here. Glockenklang preamps an interesting thing in these units in that going from active to passive, and it is something that they make as a bit of a sales pitch mm. within their own um, selling of their own products and so forth, but there's hardly any difference when you go from active to passive, so you don't have that big weird jump that happens uh, between yeah. the two. Uh, the thing I like about these units, uh, apart from not really colouring things up and so forth, just giving you a base, uh, like a, or a boost or, or, or car to, it basically gives you what the instrument sounds like. I love it in the uh, passive mode where you've still got the ability to roll mm. off a bit of treble. You can actually um, you can back it off a bit if you want to as well. It's not a massive thing. It's there, you know. I think preamp makers are starting to get around to the idea of, yeah, we better actually make a passive tone yeah. roll off. Um, Some of them have left that off the menu for quite And one thing I noticed that I like is that the the volume, there's not a volume jump between mm -hmm. padding from front. Both pickups. Back pickup. Yeah. It's pretty balanced. The volume is pretty balanced, which yeah. is, um, I don't know if that's maybe a, a humbucker thing. Or could be, it could be, and look, that might be that might be some of Seymour Duncan's magic going on mm. in there as well to actually get the mm. output levels because you know they'll have different um, <coughs> outputs between the the two different pickups, yeah. the two different placements because it's not the ide identical pickup. There there is definitely a, a neck and a, yeah. a bridge in that sort of instance. So um, yeah, cool. lovely lovely sort of pickups. They they have um, certain crispness to them, but a lot of girth as well. So mm. quite yeah. quite peculiar to that. Excellent. Cool. All right. Marilyn. Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs>